Well, it's official. It looks like the stock market is in trouble again. I keep seeing reports day after day about how the stock market is dropping. By mid-December, the stock market had actually dropped by around 2%. The Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQs are all dipping. So today, I kind of wanted to talk about exactly what is going on with the stock market. Why are we seeing markets start to drop right now? And what is that going to mean for 2022? But before I get into all of that, my name is Nate from Minority Mindset News. And if you like this video, then smash that thumbs up button below and hit that notification bell too. That way YouTube shows our videos to way more money minds around the world and we can keep making videos just like this one. So for a little while there, it looked like the stock market was actually going to rise. We saw reports in October and November of stocks actually recovering from the pandemic. It looked like the virus was finally starting to go away. However, by the beginning parts of December 2021, we saw a brand new variant of the virus. Which brings us to the first reason on why the stock market is starting to tank right now. The new Omicron variant is spreading all throughout the United States and the rest of the world. And you could say that it has investors a little bit worried. Now we've talked a lot about this new Omicron variant on this channel and I'm not going to give you the health implications of this new variant. But what I can tell you is that investors are scared of what it might mean for our economy and more importantly, the stock market. You see, back in March of 2020, everything pretty much shut down because of this virus. We were in a pandemic, which meant everybody had to start social distancing to protect the greater health of everyone in our society. However, that also meant that a lot of our businesses needed to shut down. And if our businesses are starting to shut down, then people can't exactly get paid. And if people can't get paid, they can't go out and buy things, which means businesses aren't going to get any money either. So even if they do manage to stay open through all of the pandemic, they're still going to see a lot lower of profits. Profits are what help businesses grow. If businesses have huge profits, then they can start building, which means hiring more people, building new locations, which can ultimately mean more profits, which is exactly what the stock market likes to see. However, everything was going into an economic lockdown. And the fact of the matter is, we didn't really know how long these lockdowns were going to last for. This made the stock market scared, and a lot of investors started to pull their money out of the New York Stock Exchange, which eventually led to a crash and one of the fastest crashes in stock market history. I mean, just looking at the numbers here, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or just the Dow for short, dropped by around 10,000 points in just the span of a couple months. The Dow went from 29,000 points all the way down to 19,000 points in just the span of a few months. And the S&P 500 and NASDAQ did the exact same thing. And like I said, this is because investors wanted to take their money out of the New York Stock Exchange. And they did that at a record pace. This meant that markets were crashing and investors were putting their money into assets that were going to protect them from this market crash. A lot of them moved their money to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which is part of the reason why crypto has boomed over the last two years. And a lot of investors move their money into other assets like real estate and gold and silver. But even though this new Omicron variant has been discovered, what exactly does that mean for stocks? All of this happened in 2020. So why exactly are investors pulling their money out again? Well, the Omicron variant is one of the biggest variables for our economic success in 2022. We don't really know a ton about it yet because it's so new and investors are scared that if it's as strong as the Delta variant or some other strands of the virus, then we may see some more economic closures. Economic closures can mean a variety of different things. First and foremost, that means people will be out of work and people are going to have a hard time getting money, which means less money into the economy. And when there's less money in the economy, businesses aren't going to get as much money either. This could all happen if the Omicron variant causes economic lockdowns. Now, to be fair, President Joe Biden has said that economic lockdowns are not on the table at this moment. However, they could come back very soon if this Omicron variant poses a threat to our society. Number two, that's going to put the Federal Reserve in a really tough position. The Federal Reserve monitors inflation and our monetary policy throughout the United States. This is the same group that printed trillions of dollars to help lift us out of the pandemic in 2020. They printed three to five trillion dollars in economic stimulus, which was direct payments to Americans, and they also printed money 
money in unemployment assistance. This was extra money that the federal government was providing on top of state benefits. You also had the Paycheck Protection Program, which was designed to lift businesses out of the pandemic as well. All businesses needed to do was not fire people and keep incomes going, and the federal government would give them some extra money. Now, all of that was decided throughout the pandemic in parts of 2020 and in 2021. However, a lot of that economic stimulus started to disappear as our economy began to improve. After things crashed in March of 2020 and parts of April, the stock market actually boomed. It went on one of its biggest and fastest bull runs in stock market history. Part of the reason for that is because the Federal Reserve printed so much money to help lift the stock market specifically out of the pandemic. When the pandemic essentially crashed the stock market, they were afraid that people weren't going to put their money into the New York Stock Exchange. And that can hurt a lot of people all at once. For one, it can hurt retirement plans. A lot of 401ks and Roth IRAs are connected to the stock market. In addition, you have index funds and ETFs all throughout the world that are connected to the New York Stock Exchange. If those go down, then people are losing money, and they're not just losing money today. They're losing money for their future retirement. This actually caused a lot of people to delay their retirement in 2020. So people are now retiring in 2021 when they should have retired back in 2020. But with the stock market going down in general, that's bad for businesses. Businesses get hundreds of billions of dollars from stock market investments every single year, and they rely on that money to help grow and push the company even further. If that money all goes away, then those businesses are only going to rely on their profits and sales. They basically have no cushion and they basically have no safety net without any investments. And a lot of businesses are going to suffer because of that. That ultimately could have led to our economy starting to shrink. You see, the progress and success of our economy is measured in GDP, our gross domestic product. Think of our GDP as like the revenue of our entire country. This is what all of our businesses are actually putting out into the world. How much is everyone actually making in our country? When our GDP starts to shrink, then you start to see a slowing economy. A slowing economy means less jobs, it means less businesses, and ultimately it means less money is going around. And if there's less money going around, then fewer people can spend it. So the Federal Reserve decided to step in and do what's known as quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is when the Federal Reserve enters the market and starts purchasing corporate bonds and treasury notes. They're essentially doing the same thing as stimulus checks, except for they're stimulating the stock market. So they started to pour hundreds of billions of dollars into the New York Stock Exchange buying bonds. And even though it was kind of artificial, it lifted the stock market out of its collapse. This is because billions upon billions of dollars were going into the New York Stock Exchange every single month. And the Federal Reserve actually did this for around 19 months. They ended up with a balance sheet that equaled around $8.7 trillion. But like I said, our economy and the stock market actually started to recover just after those big crashes in March of April of 2020. And what this ultimately comes down to is money. The Federal Reserve and the United States government stimulated the economy so much that we ultimately got out of our recession faster than we ever have in American history. So much money was circulating throughout the economy that even though people weren't working, they went out and spent money. They were getting money every single month, sometimes more than they were even making before. And the stock market was booming because there was no way that it could lose. For one, it had record low profits in parts of 2020. And now in 2021, when people are back out and spending and fatigued from not spending in 2020, everybody is going out and spending money now, which has led to record high profits for businesses in almost every industry. And our economy growing is definitely a good thing. Some projections showed that by the end of 2021, our economy actually was going to grow at a rate of around 2.2%. That means GDP is starting to rise rise again. But what it also meant is that the Federal Reserve is starting to pull back a lot of its stimulus. They announced at a key Fed meeting in December of 2021 that they were going to start raising interest rates in 2022. They were also going to pull back their quantitative easing measures because the stock market is now doing just fine. However, that can become a problem if this Omicron variant causes more lockdowns, which is exactly what most investors are afraid of right now. They're taking their money 
off the table because they'd rather get their profits now when things are at new record highs rather than wait until 2022 when things could potentially start crashing again. And here are some specific numbers on why investors are scared right now. The new strain of the virus called Omicron has been found in around 43 out of the 50 states as of December 20th, 2021. It has now been found in well over 90 different countries and cases have essentially doubled in around one and a half to three days. Specifically though, investors are starting to pull their money from what were dubbed the reopening stocks. These were all of your stocks that were not tech-based, so things that people couldn't do from their own home. A lot of travel stocks like United Airlines and Southwest Airlines went down by around 3 to 4% over the last few days. In addition, a lot of your restaurant stocks and a lot of your cruise stocks started to drop as well. Next up, you had energy stocks like oil giants ExxonMobil start to drop as well. Investors are pulling their money from these stocks because those were the biggest stocks that took a massive hit back back in 2020. When we went into economic lockdowns back in 2020, the travel industry was one of the hardest hit. People weren't flying anymore for business or for leisure mainly because there was nothing open and you could have had a much higher risk of contracting the virus than you would if you were anywhere else, like your house. So that meant an entire industry was essentially collapsing because of the virus. The United States government ended up printing billions of dollars just to help out the airline industry specifically because a lot of those companies didn't have any cash on hand and they were going to fail, which meant hundreds of thousands of people were gonna lose their jobs. Not only that, but energy took a massive hit too. Gas prices in particular went to new record lows. Crude oil, in fact, was trading at negative levels, which means oil suppliers were literally paying people to take their oil away from them. That is how bad things got. There's a lot of money in those industries too, but now people are starting to move their money around again. And they're even pulling their money from a lot of tech stocks. In addition, there is one other reason why the stock market is starting to dip right now. President Joe Biden has said he wants to pass his Build Back Better bill. This bill essentially funds a lot of social programs in the United States and would expand a lot of programs as well. However, there are some Democrats that are saying they will not pass this bill as it stands right now, which means $1.75 trillion can't be printed and then circulated throughout the economy. And the stock market does not like to hear when the United States government pulls back spending. The stock market actually likes it when the United States prints money, at least at first. Because typically when the United States government prints money, that money has to go out to somebody. Even if it's a government program, somebody eventually gets that money. That means you or someone around you is going to get part of that bill. And when people have more money, they typically go out and spend this money. This is exactly what happened with the stimulus checks, which sometimes equaled thousands of dollars back in 2020 and in parts of 2021. Around 50% of these checks were spent just about a week after they were issued, which meant hundreds of billions of dollars were being poured into the economy and eventually going back to businesses, which means profits are going to go up. And like I said, businesses saw record profits over the last two years. So this Build Back Better bill may not go through, which means a lot less money for the stock market in general and businesses that would benefit from it. But I know what you're probably thinking, if the United States government printed all of this money to get us out of the pandemic before, why can't they just print even more money if it happens again? Well, the number one reason that probably everyone is screaming at me right now is inflation. Inflation basically means your monetary supply is going way up. But we typically see inflation every single year, which means our United States government and the Federal Reserve is printing more money every single year. But the United States government doesn't just print money and then hold on to it. They print this money and then spread that money all throughout our economy. Some of it goes to banks so that way they can lend out money. Some of it goes to businesses so they can pay employees. And ultimately it's going out into the private sector. And sometimes it'll even go back into government funded programs. But at the end of the day, all of that money is getting circulated back to citizens. 
you are going to get a cut of every single dollar that the Federal Reserve ultimately prints. I'm saying no matter what it is used for, if the Federal Reserve funds a program, a tax bill, or gives it to businesses like a bank or a corporation, eventually you are going to get that money. What you actually decide to do with that money though will directly influence how high inflation gets. If everybody decided to go out and spend money all at once, then that means the price of just about everything is going to go up. This is why we are seeing such high inflation right now because the supply of everything that we have within our economy is running into some issues. Our supply chain is stretched because everybody went out in 2020 and bought a ton of things. They were getting money and sometimes more money than they even had to go out and buy things. In addition, we're starting to see wages rise throughout the United States because of inflation. That means people have more money and prices are ultimately going to lag behind. And unemployment is very low too, which means more people are employed and more people have money to buy things. That's great, except for there's only so much on our shelves and only so much on online retailers. Eventually, these companies are going to have to produce more goods. And when they produce more goods, that is going to come at a cost. Businesses will initially pay that cost up front, but, but ultimately that cost is going to get trickled down to you. And in 2021, inflation has gotten out of control. And that has investors worried because if inflation gets too high, will hit a period of hyperinflation. Basically, hyperinflation means that the value of every dollar in the economy is basically worthless. You need so much money in order to buy just everyday normal things. Now, we are definitely not in a period of hyperinflation, but it's starting to scare some investors right now. And the Federal Reserve is actively battling inflation by pulling a lot of its economic stimulus, stopping quantitative easing, and raising interest rates in 2022. However, the Omicron variant and economic shutdowns may put them in a tough position. They might have to start bailing out the US economy again. That means more money. Money. and our supply chains are already constricted so much that we can barely keep up with the demand of everything in our society. So if everything goes down and shuts down again, that could be catastrophic for our economy. The Federal Reserve might even have to bring a lot of its economic stimulus back, which would only push inflation up even higher because people are ultimately going to spend this money. And it'll need to be higher than before because inflation is higher now. So they printed around three to $5 trillion in stimulus and it would most likely need to be even more if this happened again. And like I said, that means the buying power of your money is going down and everybody in the entire economy is going to have to start making more money. And ultimately, it would just reset the entire process. So investors are starting to pull their money from the New York Stock Exchange and buy things that will protect them against a market crash or an economy collapsing. And basically, this is all coming at a time when we don't really know much about the Omicron variant yet, except for that it is spreading rapidly throughout the world and the United States. The CEO of Moderna actually came out and said a third booster of its vaccine will give you adequate protection against this new Omicron variant. We are still studying how this virus actually interacts with humans. And a lot of experts are saying that this virus may spread very rapidly, but it might not be nearly as deadly as some of the past variants. That means it would be more seasonal, like a flu or a cold, and it wouldn't be a cause for major concern anymore, which might help the stock market in 2022, but right now, things are starting to tank. Nobody really knows what's going to happen, and that is scaring investors because it reminds them of what happened in 2020. But now I wanna hear from you on this issue. What do you think about the stock market tanking at the end of 2021? Do you think this Omicron variant is going to be a big deal and eventually crash markets and our economy in 2022? Or do you think that our economy and the stock market is going to boom because this Omicron variant is going to be found to be not a big deal at all. Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling money minds, and I'll see you all in the next one.